Welcome to our lecture online. We're now ready to do part three, the final part of how to solve a linear uh, set of equations or a what we call a system of linear equations using the inverse matrix method. So again, we have our two equations. We change them into the format so we can put them into a matrix format. Notice we create two matrices, A and B, where the A matrix is the coefficients of the X and Y variables, and the B matrix is the constants on the right side, the equal sign. And then we can write those two equations in this matrix format, where the A matrix times the X and Y matrix equals the B matrix. And then to solve for the X and Y matrix, essentially the X and Y coordinates, we, multi we take the inverse of matrix A and multiply it by B. And in the last two videos, we gave you the two methods to take a two-by-two two matrix and convert the matrix into the inverse matrix. Now we're ready to show you how to do this multiplication. So here, remember that we took the second method was we took the A matrix and the identity matrix, and then using the reduced echelon format, we changed the left side to this, and then automatically this became the inverse matrix, which was this right here. But notice we could also factor out a one-third, so we can either write the inverse matrix like this, or we can write the inverse matrix like this, and we're going to show you both multiplications to see that we get the right x and y values for the solution. So how do you multiply these two matrices? You multiply this times this, and you add this times this. So you go across here, and you go down here. So that means that the x value, x and y, is equal to, in the numerator, you get one-third times negative two plus one-third times eight. So that's this times this plus this times this. In the bottom, that equals y, you get negative two-thirds times negative two. And you add to that the multiplication of those two. That would be one-third and eight. Notice. I went across this way and down this way. So one third times negative two, one third times eight, negative two thirds times negative two, one third times eight, and those will then be the values belonging to x and y. So let's see what these are equal to. So this is negative two thirds plus eight thirds. Negative two plus eight, that's six thirds. So in the numerator, we end up with six thirds. In the denominator, we get that is a, a positive four thirds plus 8 thirds, that would be 12 thirds. And of course, when you do the division, 6 divided by 3 is 2, 12 divided by 3 is 4. That tells us that the values for x and y are 2 and 4, which is exactly, of course, what we found on the previous videos. Or you can do it maybe a little bit simpler here without dealing with all the fractions. So this is equal to 1 third times 1 times negative 2 plus 1 times 8. And then, for the bottom numbers, because remember, this was x and y, and this should be a better equal sign, so let's make it a little better. There we go. So here we have negative 2 times negative 2 plus 1 times 8. Uh, let's see here. Yes, 1 times 8, same multiplication. So let's now simplify this. So we have the x and the y. That's equal to 1 third times negative 2 plus 8. That's a positive 6. And Positive 4 plus 8, that's a positive 12. And now when we multiply this through, that means that 1 third times 6 gives us 2, and 1 third times 12 gives us 4. So it doesn't matter which way you do it, you get the exact same result for x and y. So you can say that the x and y coordinates are equal to 2 and 4. And remember, that's where the two lines represented by those two equations cross one another. And that is how it's done using the inverse matrix method. The easiest method. It's not the easiest method, but it does have its allure. It does have its reasons for being. It may not be apparent, but it's a very good method for certain Computers. things. Computers and repetitive, repetitive exercises, yes. Covers a lot of fractions. Well, also, let's say you have lots of situations where the B matrix always changes. For example, you have the same two equations, but the constants are always changing. You have a whole bunch of different sets of constants. You're already set up. All you have to do is simply change these two numbers, multiply it out, and get the new result each single time. That's a nice method. It's for computers. <laughs> Not for 
we'll stick with the elimination and the substitution methods. There we go.